Hey guys, it's Sarah Schneider with NurseLife.org. Happy Tuesday. So today I want to talk about this idea of how you can bring more of what you want into your life um, through not only the positive thoughts that you have, but through the, the way that you show up in the world and, and your feelings. So one of the things that I learned um, several years back that really transformed my life and um, what's funny is, yes, I do nutrition, obviously. I'm a nutritionist. I've got a degree in dietetics. But like what my clients will tell you is I am a holistic nutrition slash life coach, right? We do a lot of life stuff. And the reason we do so much life stuff is because it's your life that influences the way that you show up um, with food, right? It influences how you use food. And so that's why we have to do so much life stuff. So one of the things that I learned um, years ago was this idea that if I wanted something, hey, you ever have them? Um, if I wanted something, I needed to figure out what feelings and um, went with that, with that desire, right? And then I had to be that. Right. I had to live that feeling out in my life so that I would get more of it in return. Because here's the thing. If you approach life and you're like, you know what, everything is just not working out and it's just really crummy and I feel like, you know, suffocating. Like if I was, you know, back in corporate America, I would say stuff like I just I'm feeling like, you know, it's soul sucking. Um, I, I just, I, it felt miserable. Like every day I would walk in and it just felt really crummy, right? Well, that's not going to get you more of what you want. <laughs> Feeling crummy is only going to bring you more things that feel crummy. Um, and it was this, it wasn't until I realized that um, <clears throat> whatever you want, whatever you want to receive in your life, whatever you really desire, it's it's because it gives you some sort of feeling. It gives you some sort of thing that makes you feel a certain way, right? So let's talk about like, I, this is one of my big examples for this. What if you, if you are obsessed <laughs> with winning the lottery, what are you really obsessed with? Like, what are you really getting excited about? You're really getting excited about um feeling free because let's think about it when you win the lottery what are you getting out of that when you win the lottery you're getting freedom you're getting money what does money afford you it gives you the opportunity to do whatever you want to do right um when you win the lottery you get choice right you get to make all the decisions you get to quit a soul-sucking job and live your purpose maybe maybe you get that means that you get to take all that money and put it into something that you really love and think about the feelings that you would have had if you win the lottery. So if you're really excited and you want to win the lottery because it just feels like it would solve all your problems, what is it solving? All of the problems that we just talked about, right? The feeling, the need to feel free, being able to choose whatever it is you want to do, living your purpose, not have to be in the soul sucking job, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> and then think about the feelings that are attached to that. It's pure joy like if you right now close your eyes and visualize what it would feel like if you looked you're looking at a lottery ticket right and you're watching the tv and um the first number comes up on the tv and that's your number and you're like Woo, i got one right and then the second one comes up on the tv and that's your number and you start it starts bubbling up inside of you and you start getting excited right you start filling up like there's possibility right? and then the third one it's your number and then the fourth one and you are just full of excitement full of joy and you're like you know what even if I don't win all of it I'm winning big tonight right and then the fifth one comes in and then the sixth one comes in and you are literally jumping up and down screaming your head off you're full of joy full of excitement full of just like all of the possibilities right that's it. That's that feeling that you have to come into this world feeling like that's the that's the feeling that you have to bottle up and feel even before you win the lottery. Right. 
Um, and it's the same thing for nutrition. So let's talk about it from the nutrition point of view. Um, if you are feeling really crummy and you are telling yourself really nasty things and you are, you know, wanting to escape, if you are, you know, using certain foods to numb certain feelings around you, right? That or you're using certain foods to raise your mood, right? Because we know that certain foods, usually carbs, usually sugar, will raise your serotonin level. Serotonin is your feel-good hormone in the brain, right? So when we're raised, so when we're eating those foods to raise the serotonin levels, we're really using those foods to give us the happy feels. So the, the thing that I wanted to address today is this idea that if you are already feeling those things, right? then we don't have to turn to whatever food it is to make us feel those things. Because we know, this is what's incredible, guys, you can do this all on your own. You can sit here and visualize something amazing, and all of those feelings will bubble up inside of you. You don't have to do anything else. Like, you can literally do this yourself. Um, you can start feeling whatever it is you want to feel because all you have to do is tap into those emotions you you visualize something right something really beautiful or something really exciting or whatever it is and you can tap into those emotions and start living life from that seat of emotion does that make sense i hope this makes sense anyways you start living life from that place right so um, let's go back to the whole freedom thing because a lot of people have this and this is like my thing the whole freedom thing So one of the things that I started doing when I was in corporate America and I felt like my soul was literally being sucked out <laughs> um, And I wanted freedom more than anything and more than anything I kept talking about like winning the lottery winning the lottery if I could just win the lottery then everything would be better and it took me a little while to figure out the connection right and the connection was that I wanted to be free of corporate America, number one. But number two, what does the lottery give you? It affords you the opportunity to do whatever the hell you wanted to do. And that's what I wanted, right? I wanted to do my sole purpose, right? I wanted to live my purpose. Um, and so I started listening to music that made me feel free. I literally created a list of all of the things that made me feel free, like that abandonment feeling, right? That that feeling that I was on top of the world um, and that made me feel happy, made me feel full of joy, made me feel free, made me feel like I was literally high as a kite, right? Um, and guess what? When you start approaching life with those emotions, with those feelings, and you are that, you get more of it in return. So <clears throat> when I started really focusing on all of these things that made me feel free, that made me feel joy, that made me feel um, peace in my heart again, because corporate America sure will rile some things up in there, <laughs> um, that's when everything started connecting, right? That's when... I started realizing that, yes, you know what? I'm going to go buy a website today, randomly, right? Because I'm free. I can do whatever the heck I want, right? So I go buy a website. Um, and then, sorry, that was one of my clients. And then, um, you know, I started saying, you know what? I'm going to put stuff on the website. And then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. And before I knew it, I was literally doing this thing, right? Doing this whole, like, business thing quit corporate America and I was free. I get to work from home. I take my kids to school every morning. I pick them up. Um, I get to go have lunch with my husband. He works like right above me. We both work from home. I'm literally living the exact life that um, I wanted to live. I'm literally living the exact life I wanted to live. So here's the thing, when it comes to nutrition, if you have been struggling for years and years and years and years and years, it gets to the point where you don't think it's possible. And you get to the point where you feel so low, you don't know if it's possible, if you can rise. And that's really tough. 
when you get to that point where you're so low that you don't know if you have it in you to do anything different, to be anything different, it's a tough place to be. And those feelings are going to keep you down in that really dark place. And that's what I don't want for you. So today, I want you to think of what you can do to start shifting into the feelings that you want. Because here's the thing. If you are overweight and you are feeling really crummy and you have no energy and the negative thought gremlins are just absolutely horrific, right? They're saying the nastiest, meanest things that anybody has ever thought about you. Um, and they're just swirling in your head, right? To get out of that, to get what you want. And then you want, and then you're like, but I want to be happy and I want to be healthy and I want to be a good model, you know, role model for my kids. And I want all these great things. But you're feeling like this, you're never going to get there. It'll just, it won't happen. So what we have to do is we have to shift. And this is what I was talking about yesterday with these positive feelings and affirmations and all this granola -y stuff that I'm sure you're like, seriously, dude, you have like a degree in science <laughs> and you're talking about all these granola -y principles. But seriously, this stuff works. Um, there's scientific uh, proof, validation, verification, whatever you want to call it, evidence that this stuff works, okay? So um, <clears throat> to shift that, you need to focus on what you're number one grateful for. Number one thing. And if you ask my clients, I will ask them this all the time, right? Um, this is something that we do on a daily basis. We write out what are we grateful for. Um, it's something I still do. I do it every single day, right? What are what am I grateful for? And I think about it throughout the day. Um, because that will elicit, right? That's going to evoke that's going to produce more positive emotions when you are grateful you cannot be you know miserable and um feeling down you just can't it doesn't work that way so number one shift is to be grateful um so right now even if you feel like nothing in your life is working because when i was in corporate america i was feeling pretty low right um i really was not living my purpose and I was feeling really burnt out and I started doing this and then started shifting and it totally transformed my life but I literally every single morning I don't know if I have my journal right there no get a cute journal um I'm trying to find I don't know where mine is I don't know where I put it I look like my grandmother when I do that she does that <laughs> I love my Gigi, but that's really funny. Um, so no, get a journal and every single morning you write out your gratitudes. And even when like my life, like even when it wasn't going well, even when I was in a horrible, toxic um, relationship and going through a terrible, painful divorce, here's the thing. There's something to be grateful for. I was grateful for my daughter. I was grateful that I had parents that were super supportive. I was thankful that I had parents that would pick up my kid when I was running late. Um, I was super grateful that, you know, I was able to find an attorney that, that was amazing and believed in me and believed that, you know, um, did everything that he could to help my daughter. I, I mean, that's what I'm saying is even in the, the depths of, I know I was really grateful that I had a high paying job because as a single mom, <clears throat> that's a fear that a lot of single moms have, right? But you know, how am I gonna do all this on my own? Um, I was grateful that I had a beautiful house that I was gonna be able to afford to keep because I had that good job. I was um, grateful that my kid was in the best school ever <laughs> um, and that, you know, she had so many resources that she she had available to her, even though she was only, you know, a little bitty, tiny thing at the time. Um, so that's the kind of thing that I want you to think about, even in the depths of the worst, um, the worst situations that you can be in. There is something to be grateful for. And the more that you are able to identify what you are grateful for, what is working in your life, the more you're going to see the shift into receiving more of what you want. It, 
it's inevitable. It has to happen. Um, I know that a lot of people kind of view this whole like law of attraction thing as kind of sacrilegious or like hoaxy or something like that. But um, there's scientific proof. And if you look into the Christian faith, there's, sci there's actual like Christian based evidence as well that this stuff works. Ask and you shall receive. I mean, it's such a succinct scripture, but it's so true. Like if you ask God and it's something that, you know, is good for everyone, not like, I wish my assessment would fall off a cliff. You know, what I mean? that's not, that's not asking you shall receive, right? If it's good for everyone, um, if it's going to further you, further your journey, then yes, it'll happen. Um, so today when we're not feeling grateful, if you like, let's say, let's talk body image. If you're not feeling grateful about um, your body, if you're feeling really miserable about your body, if you feel like your body, um, you know, is just ugly and big and um, you're just repulsed by yourself. Um, and I say this with so much love and compassion in my heart because I've been there, right? Um, if that's how you're feeling, you have to shift that. You are never going to get to where you want to be if you feel like that. So today, um, if you, you know, are not feeling the best about your body, you need to write down every single thing that you find amazing about your body. So if you are a mama, you created a being in your body. Your body brought life into this world. That right there is something to be grateful for, right? That you were able to carry a baby, not just carry, but create a baby, carry that baby in you for nine months and deliver that baby into this world. That is, I can't think of anything more, more, um, you know, gratitude filled, joy filled than that. Um, <clears throat> think about your eyes, your nose, your smile, your hair. Um, your, you know, your legs that they, they can help you get to where you want to be. Like whatever it is, find things that you are grateful for. And I promise you, when you start focusing on what is working, you will see the shift. You will. It'll happen. So today, the two, the two things that we can do is number one, um, really tap in to the feelings of what it is you're going to receive, right? So whatever it is that you desire that you want to receive, tap into those feelings and find ways to feel them more, find ways to amplify it. So this is that whole idea. If you want to feel free, write out a list of all the things that make you feel free. If you want to feel healthy, write out all the ways that you're going to feel healthy, right? Um, and, and feel it like, Amplify it, magnify it, make it feel huge, right? Really tap into those feelings because when you tap into those positive feelings, more of those positive feelings are going to be attracted to you and you're going to get more out of it, okay? Two, be grateful. <laughs> no, seriously, this is something I tell my kids all the time because you know our kids, um, they are just not as grateful as we would like them to be all the time. But seriously, it's about being grateful and really writing out that list. So no matter what it is, if you're having um, an argument with your spouse, write out a list of gratitudes of how amazing that spouse is. I'm telling you, it will shift it. As much as you don't want to do it, as much as you're frustrated or angry or sad or disappointed, um, go somewhere quiet and start writing a list of all the amazing things that is that person, and it will shift. And then you will find something in your heart to say to that person and things will shift. I promise you, I do this all the time. Um, if it is something about your body, find the gratitude in what you have, what you are, right? In your physical beingness. Write out a list of all the amazing things that, about your body that you do love. Because we know that the more positive things that you say to yourself about your body, <clears throat> the better your body works, right? The more calories it burns, the more um, nutrients are absorbed. It's silly, but it's all interconnected. <clears throat> Sorry, 
I did not get the flu. I'm so excited because my little one, she had it. My husband and I did not get it, but I did get a little bit of like a hack, just a teeny tiny bit. So um, I am a hundred percent grateful that I did not get the flu. Um, and I will gladly accept this little tiny, little teeny tiny hack um, because yeah, that would have really set me off, right? So anyways, um, two things. Tap into your, I got distracted for some reason. Tap into your, <clears throat> maybe it's because I did that. Tap into the feelings, right? Tap into the feelings that you want to feel based on what you want to receive. So if you have to like write out a little list or something, do that. And then two, um, gratitudes. Okay. And basically what we're doing with both techniques is we are amplifying, we are magnifying, we are bringing about, we are eliciting big, huge, positive feelings so that we're attracting more of that. Okay. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Let me know if you need anything and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys.